Have you been given any sort of restrictions for blood and guts next week? Because it is blood and guts, and people are going to expect some blood and guts. It's yeah, also yeah, 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 on you, TNT, you, you, so you can't cut someone's head off or whatever. <laughs> so, like, what have they? What have they told you? Like, okay, you know, uh, three people can bleed or whatever. Or are there no restrictions? Just like use your brain and don't get us kicked off TNT. I mean, obviously, I mean, we've seen a lot of kind of gimmick matches, violent matches. I mean, uh, what can we do that Brit and Thunder Rosa didn't do, you know, three weeks ago? Uh, I'm smarter than that. You guys know me, man. You guys know how I think and how I am. And just because it's called blood and guts doesn't mean there's going to be 10 guys, you know, going coast to coast, brother. You know, it's like that's not going to be the case because that's that doesn't do anything for you. I think once again, the idea is you're putting these 10 guys in this cage. Um, you know, when they beat me up, I was bleeding. When we beat them up, I mean, Dax wasn't supposed to bleed. If you watch it, I hit him, uh, I grab a picture off the wall and I just hit him. I hit Max over the back with it. And then I just kind of hit Dax as he was walking away and the just splinter just caught him. And so now he's suddenly bleeding all over the place. So we've seen blood before in this feud. Um, I think it's more about the intensity, about the story we tell, how the match ends. So yeah, I'm sure there'll be some blood. Uh, there won't be any guts. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to disappoint you guys. But no one's going to get uh, Harry carried with a samurai sword where you see any entrails or anything like that. Um, but I think once again, what do we want to do to really show how intense and violent this match is? Guys don't have to bleed to do that. Um, but you know, once again, it, it's the first time we've ever seen this because it's not. It's not a, a, a true blue war games either. The, the the apparatus is different just because of the way, I don't think I'm giving anything away here, but the, the, the configurations of Daly's place, it's not, you've never seen a, 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 an apparatus like this. There are some differences to it. So Blood and Guts really is a new version. It's not WWE's version of a war games. It's not Dusty's version of a war games. It's AEW's version of a war games. That's why it's called Blood and Guts. It's got a different name to it. So and I like that. I don't like I, I like the fact that it has to be different. Not just not just because we don't own the copyright for war games, because we actually are making this a little bit different from what you're used to. So I think it's one of those ones. It's a destination show, as Dave called it. It's a destination match. Uh, we've already sold more tickets for this show than we have any other post-pandemic show. Just on the on the interest for that, and I think people are going to be very satisfied when it's finished. Um, I don't expect to see 10 guys, like I said, bleeding all over the place. Uh, that doesn't, I think that's kind of, uh, a little bit, uh, it kind of, um, takes away from, from the violence rather than add to it, but it's going to be a smartly worked, uh, excellent story match for sure. When, when last year, you know, when you came up with the, when you guys came up with the stadium stampede idea and it was such a, such a big hit, I mean, like it's a, one of those weird things because, you know, now it's like, it's almost been a year. And there's a part of me that goes like, you know, that should be like a signature thing like the Royal Rumble or something like that. But then at the same time, it's like then you're getting into the the WWE thing like, oh, it's November. We have to do, you know, TLC. It's December. Mm -hmm. We have to do TLC. And then that takes away from it because it's when it's not like this builds to it and you're just doing it to force it. It's just another show. I mean, when it comes to Stadium Stampede, like, do you have any kind of idea of and also the other part of the stadium stampede is that i that i've always worried about since right after the first one finished because it was like this is such a success but how the hell can you match this because that match was so just creative and different and you know it just felt like i mean there were so many good ideas in that match it was just to me that was like one of the most incredible matches i've ever seen um but at some point, I would think it's you've got to do it again. Uh, you know, like so. Have you have you thought about that idea or anything like that? Yeah, you know, once again, it is, it, as long as the storyline warrants it, like you could have, for example, a Hell in the Cell pay per view every May, and then you just start building the story in January for that. Where it's like every year, isn't it funny how this blood feud always begins in January and it culminates? At, you're not shoehorning it in. You plan yeah. for it. So, yes, we could do another stadium stampede because this is wrestling. Once something is a hit, you always do it again. But 
I was in the first elimination chamber. I was in the first Money in the Bank match. I was in the first Stadium Stampede. I was in the first Mimosa Mayhem. When I first pitched Mimosa Mayhem, people looked at me like they thought I was insane. And then as soon as the match was done, everybody wants to have a Mimosa Mayhem. Who doesn't want to take a bump in the in the fucking orange juice, right? <laughs> so I mean, it's one of those things that that I think Stampede, Stadium Stampede, it was a necessity because we didn't have anywhere to go. We had this giant open stadium, and that was Tony's idea to do a match in the stadium. Cody called it Stadium Stampede, and that was basically it. What do we do? Like, do we try and, you know, carry each guy over the the football line or whatever the hell is going on? We really didn't know what, what the heck we are going to do. Now, because there's been one, if you remember the first Elimination Chamber, that was a disaster, too, in that they opened the wrong door and the Hunter got his larynx crushed, and it's just like, what the yeah. fuck are we doing? So Stampede was different because... I mean, we had much more of a comedy element because that's kind of where we were with Elite and Inner Circle, and I'm knocking out mascots and Matt Hardy's Broken Man in the Lake of Reincarnation, and Ortiz gets stuck in the bell, which is still one of my favorite moments of all time when he's convulsing after having his bell literally rung. <laughs> you could do another stand, State of Stampede and take it in whatever way the storyline goes. Maybe it's much more uh, violent. Maybe it's way more serious this time. You know, I, I think when the first Elimination Chamber happened, how do we ever do this again? First Money in the Bank, first ladder match, how do you do this again? And suddenly everybody starts doing them and everyone injects their own bit of creativity and suddenly it becomes a thing. So I, I have no doubt that we can do Stadium Stampede again when the story warrants it. And I have no doubt you could probably do it in a, in a way that's just as good as the last one, but completely different from the one prior. And that's basically what wrestling's all about. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.